Brendan? Brendan, I'm in High Park. Uh, I, I've, I sat down and I got caught on a bramble and I've been here for six hours. Brendan, just send help. Anyone, I'd, hold on. Hold on, I've got a call waiting. <laughs> Reference pair? <laughs> Are you at the beach? <laughs> Are there women there? <laughs> <laughs> and would I what? I, I can't hear the lines not very good. There's a lot of giggling. <laughs> America. I assume you said America. You must have said America. So I'd happily. Yeah, let's do it. I'll do it. America. In the time of an edit, I'll be there. Brendan. Ha! <laughs> Twins. Oh, Matt. Hi. I'm looking for the American office. Reference pair sent me here, but I don't quite know where I am. And it's not downtown. Downtown was kind of weird. Reference pad, what, what are you doing? You can't do that! Alright, so maybe it's not fair to describe San Juan as the lab-forged offspring of citadels and race for the galaxy, because the timelines for a start just don't, they don't match up, it wouldn't, it doesn't work. But it sort of works, because if you played either of those, it's a familiar, simple card game that works with some of the same concepts, and yet also, I don't know, feels purer somehow, more distilled, almost as if you'd left those games simmering for an afternoon to really bring out the flavour before even... What are you doing? Just look, we have a copy, all right? Don't just chill, all right? Stop doing the weird things that you're doing. Don't, don't be weird. So, I can smell cooked cardboard now. So Citadels and Race for the Galaxy are two classic, classic card games. Some of the first games we actually ever looked at on the show years ago, and they're games that have aged very well indeed. Citadels is still my sort of standard, just take it around and, and show it to people. It's my travel game or my game to introduce people to board gaming and Race for the Galaxy. It got a bit sort of Baron Harkonnen, it got bloated and mad for a while, but it's had a reset recently and you can indulge in that or not, or just buy all the old expansions and have a crazy big game. The point is they still have their charm and that charm comes from relatively simple rules that are quite easy to grasp but then a lot of complexity in terms of how the games just build and grow into really really big unique things every time that you play. San Juan is kind of like that, it's sort of their cousin come to visit from the country and I don't want to say simpler cousin from the country because that's mean but it has a particular kind of pastoral purity to it that isn't quite found in these. So come here, sexy, and I'll tell you the secret of San Juan. It's just cards and rolls. It's just cards and rolls. That's all it is. I mean, this, this, this manual, which is flimsy as it is, this flimsy manual is... Half of it is just sort of an appendix that tells you what things do that is already written on cards or just clarifies potential rule conflicts, which never really happen very much. That's all it is. 
Look, it, it starts the same way. You, you'll always have your indigo plant and you'll have four cards in your hand and you'll want to make some indigo with your indigo plant. When do you do that? Whenever someone pr produces. They just take the produce token and they produce and you produce. So that's great. Everyone's happy you produce. You've got some indigo and you want to trade that indigo. When do you trade that? Whenever you or anyone else takes the trade token and then you can trade your indigo and that gives you some more cards. Ah, uh, the cards, yes, of course. The cards all, they're all something in your town, on your island. And they all have a value at the top, which is two here for the trading post, and that's how many other cards you have to burn to, to build that card. And they all have a secret Caribbean power. That's the thing. They all have a little description of what they do. And as soon as you built them and put them down, that's a thing that you can do now that you couldn't do five seconds ago. When do you build? Well, you just build whenever you or anyone else takes the build token. So it's easy. It's just a game where, you know, you're all you're doing things and you're building and you're trading and you're off to a good start and you're having a great time. Actually, the Caribbean's fantastic. Mango juice break. break was a terrible idea and now I've lost the initiative. You see what matters so so much in San Juan is going first or at least going when you mean to go. Look I'll, I'll explain. Every turn one player is the governor. And the governor gets to go first and the governorship rotates around the table so it passes to the next player and eventually comes back to you but picking a role is very very important because picking a role gives you a very specific unique advantage. If you're the builder, while everyone around the table can build, you can build stuff slightly cheaper. Don't know how that works out. I don't know exactly what the explanation for that is. Well, I guess if we worked into the night, we could get it done. If you're producing, rather than just producing one good from your, your wee indigo plant, you could produce from two things. Maybe you've just built a brand new coffee roaster and that's just coughed up some coffee for you. That's fantastic. You've produced two things. Everyone else is just producing one. Same for trading. If you want to trade, you can trade two goods if you're the person who claims that role for yourself. So you can turn that coffee into more cards. If you're the counsellor, you... No, not that kind of counsellor. Rather than just drawing some cards, which is what a counsellor does, you draw loads of cards. Although there's an exception for the prospector. The prospector just gets a free card, so you want to claim that role because no one else gets to do anything when you prospect. You go out and you get a thing, however you do that. What? But they do, they just get an extra card. And oh my goodness, will you be happy for even that single extra card because you so, so quickly seem to run out of cards in San Juan all the time. Cost you cards just to put down the cards that you want to put down and you never draw quite enough cards back and you never get enough cards back whenever you trade, particularly when you trade indigo because nobody wants indigo, it's not worth anything. It's like trying to sell socks to sharks. Oh yes, trading, I should probably explain how trading works. Whenever anyone reaches for this trader token with their sun-kissed hands, their sweaty hands, their work carbuncled, aging, wrinkled hands, you draw over a new one of these pencil-thin tokens that shows you the value of goods for that turn of trading. That's the value of indigo and sugar and tobacco and coffee and silver, right. It's how many cards you'll get for selling one of those. Next turn, when someone else trades, you'll draw a different card and it'll have slightly different values on. There are one, two, three, four, five of these. And they cycle, but they're never shuffled. So attentive players will gradually learn the seasons of the market. Now, really attentive players, really attentive players are paying very close attention to everybody else's tableau. You see, when you make a roll grab, you're not just making a choice, you're also making a denial. Sure, you may not be able to produce two goods this round, maybe you can only produce wrong, maybe you already produced two others last turn, but do you really want other people producing two goods this round? Or do you want them trading two goods this round? It's particularly important to make these considerations with the producer and trader roles, but also just with all of the roles, and also with a consideration of the tiny towns that everyone else has been building up in front of them. All of these cards you've been laying down with their Caribbean powers, each one of those is tweaking the game. They're giving someone 
a very particular, very special advantage. And in time, these begin to build up and up. All those cards are how they're, I don't want to say cheating, but bending the rules of the game. Hopefully you have some too. Hopefully after a couple of rounds of play, you've put down a few things in your own corner of San Juan, you're carving out your own suburb. And they might be things like, I don't know, a trading post that allows you to sell an additional good whenever trading happens. Doesn't matter if you're the trader or not. They might be the aqueduct that allows you to produce an extra good whenever producing happens. Doesn't matter if you're the producer or not. How about the well? Take a card from the supply whenever you produce more than one good, which if you've got the aqueduct, is probably gonna happen quite often. So do these cards combo? Well, of course they do, they certainly can. The whole idea is just to build an engine that's gonna make you a better producer, a better trader, and just give you cards. You just wanna be drawing cards like a madcap magician feeding that addiction, because burning cards is how you're gonna build some of the more expensive structures that don't really do anything, but still cost quite a few cards, and then just earn you loads of victory points at the end of the game. This is what you want to do, because that's coming sooner than you think. The end of the game will happen as soon as someone's put their 12th card in their tableau. And even with four players around the table, that can happen pretty quickly. Yep, as soon as someone puts down their 12th card, whatever that was, you conclude that build phase with any other building anyone does, and you're just done. It's complete. You have to immediately start totaling up the victory point value of everything in everyone's tableau to see who's smiling and to see who's sad. And there's inevitably some sort of knock-on combos that can be had there. And you have to check the chapel, always check the chapel. Someone will even inevitably build a chapel and that's kind of like a victory point bank where you slide cards underneath every turn instead of using them for something else and no one notices and someone, usually me, inevitably looks over and goes, when did you get that many cards? Now, I wanna say that every game of San Juan is kind of like a tree, or every tableau is sort of like a tree. You start from the same seed, from almost nothing, from an indigo plant and a few cards, and you grow, and you grow tall and strong. Or sometimes you do, sometimes you overreach. Try and put other players in the shade and, and block them and get in the way of what they're doing, or sometimes you're in the shade that you're, yourself. Sometimes you never quite get your economy going, or you, you build, too many flashy buildings that don't do anything or have too many resources, but you're never really able to trade them. But everything is organic. Everything grows differently every time you play. And that's, that's where the appeal of San Juan really lies, the fact that every game will be different. And you'll know that every choice you made, pretty much every turn mattered. It had some immediate and direct impact. It affected your growth. I don't know how many games we've looked at over the years on Shut Up and Sit Down. I've completely lost count, probably hundreds. And we're fairly often impressed by complexity or eccentric execution or particularly unusual ideas. And while that's all great and while, you know, we do love the ambition of Terra Mystica or the coyness of Dixit or the sheer scale of Twilight Imperium, sometimes it's nice to go back to the simple things. And that's why Shut Up and Sit Down recommends San Juan, because it's like returning to the simple things. It's like reading a book in the shade on a summer's day while enjoying your favourite drink. You know, it remains sophisticated in that way and, and still intelligent, and yet it somehow sidesteps all the flashiness and glitziness and, and all these things that people are trying to do now in board gaming, now that we're having a golden age. It just turns up with a couple of cool mechanics and says, yeah, chill out, enjoy yourself. And maybe that's why it and its cousins have lasted for so long, because fundamentally they just work well as wonderful, enjoyable games. Now I've got a caveat here, and you might be thinking, I recommend San Juan if, and I might be talking about comparing it to Citadels or Race. Uh, Citadels is kind of much more about the roles and politics and races, more about the economy that you build and a bit overcomplicated in comparison. No, I'm actually saying you could probably enjoy and own all of them, so you should get it anyway. No, the caveat is you might have some trouble getting it. Mm. Okay, so first of all, I want to say sorry that we didn't cover San Juan sooner. It's a perennially popular game. We certainly knew it existed and we've had lots of people in our community who've talked excitedly about it. 
So sorry, we didn't actually mention it ages ago. I mean, it celebrated its 10 year anniversary last year. Congratulations. There's a good reason for that though. And that was, it's not always something that we could actually point at people to buy because it just wasn't available. And that might be the problem now, sorry. This is an old first edition version. It's by Rio Grande Games and they don't distribute it anymore, I don't think, or print it. That's what their website says. I believe Ravensburg or Alia or Alia do, except they don't, there are copies around. Wait, no, look, I've seen them in shops and they're on the internet. And you could buy it from Amazon, there's some copies there, and at other distributors. But it seems to be oddly rare, particularly oddly rare for a game that's evergreen. If something like Carcassonne or Skull and Roses was unavailable, then we'd be up in arms. Well, sort of. So it's out there, and whichever edition you can get, whether it's an older or new reprint, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. It doesn't matter if it has the tiny expansion in it. Shut up and sit down, recommend San Juan, and wherever you find it, whatever form, you should get it. What?